Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Allegiant Stadium. Oh, what a difference a week makes. I am Hondo Carpenter, your Las Vegas Raiders beat writer on Sports Illustrated, and this is another of our Las Vegas Raiders Insider podcast, a complete recap of the win over the Browns today. Let me tell you, I took a ton of grief for saying I thought the Raiders were going to respond. And then after we found out they were going to be down six starters, I still said it. I doubled down on it, took a lot of grief from it. And I understand why. Understand why. But it isn't what I felt. And today in the locker room, I don't even know how many players knuckles. Hey, thanks for having her back. Hey, thanks for seeing what we saw. What a win for the Raiders today, 20 to 16. It's exactly what, what I told you was not pretty at all. But Al Davis doesn't say just win pretty, baby. He says just win, baby. And that's exactly what the Las Vegas Raiders did. Now, you're going to hear a lot of noise. I'm literally here in one of the coaches' boxes. Um, in front of me is the entire stadium in the field. You're going to hear noises. Workers are cleaning up and packing up gear. But we're going to break down this game today. Complete recap. It was a gritty, gutsy performance. A week ago, this team appeared. I did not believe it was reality. But I and I said that, but I could see where people thought it seemed to be a a team spiraling. I told you last week after the game, the only thing good about it was AP's strong comments. He sent a message, no coach speak, and that just set a wave off within the building all week. All week. He literally sent a message. And that message was very clear. This is not good enough. This is not Raider football. And if you're not going to play Raider football, you're not going to be around here. And good for him. He did the right thing. He was a little apologetic about it today. And I disagree with him on that. I'm going to make sure he knows I disagree with him on that. But I, I think he did the right thing. And you saw this team. I kept telling you all week, this is not what a team looks like that's rolling over, that's quitting. You're seeing now the team that I thought would win 10 games. I said to you, I don't think they're a championship game. Too many holes, too many young players. Do I think that they scored more points today if they had several of those starters back? Mm -hmm. I do. But what you just saw is a bunch of young guys that stepped up. And that's what the National Football League's about. The Raiders got better today. You're going to have some guys lose some spots when starters come back. I don't know that all of them should um, if guys continue to perform. But what you saw was young guys getting experience, getting depth. And with that comes confidence. And with confidence comes winning. And that's what it's all about. Let's not pretend this is about anything else. It's win or lose. But you saw that today. This team found a way. Now, we're not going to pretend this is the 85 Bears defense, but that's a very darn good Cleveland Brown defense, and they put up 20. They put up 20, and good for them. I want to go over some stats with you today that that stood out to me a little bit. Uh, Deshaun Watson, I've told you guys all along, I'm I'm not a fan. It has nothing to do with his off the field. I'm just not a fan of his. I think he's a very selfish player. I think he's a very me player. And I've, I know people and have friends who played with him in Houston. That's his nature. It's who it's, it's kind of how we operate. So I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, but anyways, the um, Cleveland Browns ran for 97 yards, even with my buddy, Nick Chubb, not playing 97 in the Raiders ran for 152. I want you to think about this one. Uh, Alexander Madison ran for 60. Zamir White, 50. DJ Turner, 18. Brock Bowers, 12. Uh, Tyreek McAllister, 11. Um, Trey Tucker, 3. I mean, they just found a way to run the football. You saw today, Gardner, I mean, the Luke Getze offense, I've been telling you all offseason that it's very creative and I like it. And you saw it today. And I know there's always idiots. That's why I don't read comments anymore. But I got a couple of emails that I I didn't know what they were. So I opened them and people, well, how come we haven't seen it for the first three weeks? 
well, maybe because the offensive line wasn't doing a very good job and they coached him up. Do you ever think? Amazes me how many people that have never played the game or the only way they've ever played it is on their PlayStation or Xbox and they can't find a way to enjoy a win. I said all along this was going to be a better team at the end of the season and at the beginning they're learning, they're young, it's a new offense, it's a new scheme. I even said to you, I don't think the problem is the Getze offense. No, you saw it tonight when they executed and were able to run the football. It opened up the entire field. You saw creativity everywhere. You didn't see him just trying to get the ball to Devontae. They were getting everybody involved. Let's just talk about passing for a minute. Minshew was 14 of 24, 130 yards, took two sacks, but no TDs and no interceptions with a 73 rating, but still moved the team around. Let's just talk about pass receptions. Jacoby, being Jacoby, best offensive player on the team the entire offseason. Today, 10 targets, 5 catches, 49 yards. Trey Tucker, 6 targets, 5 catches. Harrison Bryant, 2 for 2. Brock Bowers, three, uh, 2 of 3. DJ Turner, one target, zero catches. Zamir, one target, zero catches. Madison, one target, zero catches. But they throw for 130 and run for 152. <clears throat> and that's exactly what Antonio Pierce wants. Just ball control and <clears throat> do their best. And just battle it out down a bunch of starters. I mean, you got to give big praise to Adam Butler. Um, he gave the pregame talk to the team, and I was told he sounded more like a preacher than a, a teammate. He inspired this team. He inspired them, which I've been telling you about Adam Butler for a long time, very underrated player. You saw guys making plays, Christian Wilkins. I mean, he just – and let me just – you're going to you want to laugh? I'll make you laugh here for a minute. So Christian Wilkins had uh, uh, technically one assisted tackle for one tackle on the day and a half sack. A lot of people would look at that and say, wow, they're overpaying him. He was double teamed. He was triple teamed. He made it easier for everybody else. Tyree Wilson, remember, year one, and I told you this the night they drafted him, the Raiders looked at year one like a red shirt in college. He had to play because of Chandler, but he wasn't even healthy until early in the in the offseason this year. So this is really year one for him. I know there's a bunch of people he's will track, whatever. I can't even address those people. Uh, they clearly don't understand. He may end up being terrible, but they clearly don't understand football and the development of players. So they're not worth my time. I'm not going to even address them. But for the last two games, you saw his get off the ball has gotten significantly better. Now, we don't know what he's going to be, and it's not his fault where he got picked. But what we do know is he's getting better, and he's now stacked up two games back-to-back -back of his best games. Now, if he was in year four, it would have been a disappointment. But he's not. He's technically really in year one with how they looked at it when they drafted him. And they it was the Raiders knew he was injured. Two games in a row where he stacked. Last week I thought was his best game. I think this week was his best game. Now he's stacking them. That's young players coming around. A bunch of young players. Brock Bowers was a monster today. A monster today. And Jackson Powers Johnson, a monster. To, he was two really bad penalties. But he's just a, he's a young kid, high motor, learning. Rookies do that. I can deal with it when it's him, not when it's Cody Whitehair. And that's not a slam on Cody or, or even a Colton Miller. Colton didn't do those, but my, it's my point, a veteran. I'm not picking on Cody. Uh, Jackson Powers Johnson was phenomenal. I don't, if, if you DVR'd the game, you need to go back and watch at how many times the play is 10, 15, 20 yards down the field. And JPJ was running right behind a wide receiver, making downfield blocks. Brock Bowers today blocked like an animal. 
Brock Bowers today, boy, when you look at how he blocked, how he ran, you could make an argument. I, I don't, I don't, I don't think I believe it, but you could make an argument. He was the best player in the football field today. He did so much like Christian Wilkins that isn't going to show up on the stat line. He threw incredible blocks. There was one particular play in a running play where he sold he was running a route. He took two guys with him, and it just opened a lane to run. Okay, that wasn't happening earlier. That's not on Getty. Listen, I'm not an apologist for Luke Getty. I like his offense. I think he's improved. But I also don't think it was fair to just, okay, it's been two games, let's call it. I mean, at some point, Raider Nation has to get rid of this mentality. We just get rid of everybody the moment they're not perfect because they're trash. Thank God that you don't treat yourself like that in your life. I hope some of you hold yourself to the same standard you do a football team. Because clearly you'd be a failure. Because every one of us has to has to develop. But this football team developed, and I'm going to tell you something. You may not like it. That was a gutsy win. It was a great win. This was a culture-building win. Last week, in my opinion, was the worst week in the, in the franchise's um, five years that I've been covering it. I'm not saying that there haven't been other bad losses or bad times. But the way they responded, that's character. I have shared this story many times. I'm going to share it again. Tom Izzo, the Hall of Fame basketball coach, dear friend of mine, spoke to me once about teams and that when you have young players, there is a learning curve where they have to learn to win. This is what the Raiders are going through. Last week, they felt good about themselves. They're coming home from Baltimore. Oh, we're going to kick their blanks. And they showed up and they thought just showing up that teams are going to surrender to the silver and black colors. And the Carolina Panthers smacked them in the face. They learned a lesson and they were embarrassed. They were embarrassed. And you saw, I, I asked AP about it on Friday. You can go watch the video. I said, you know, you like to learn. What have you learned about your team this week? And character. Character. And I said to you on Friday that this game today was this this, this entire week uh, and, and losing all these players was not going to define the Raiders. I believed it was going to refine the Raiders. If they would have just laid down today, which I promised you they wouldn't, it would have defined them. But they chose to do what people of character do. Every one of us fails. Every one of us makes massive mistakes. Every one of us can be our own worst enemy. Don't pretend like it was just the Raiders last week. Every one of us has done it in our lives. But when you choose to say, okay, that's going to refine me, not define me. And that's exactly what the Raiders did today. They were gutsy. They dug deep. They found a way. They found a way. That's just what the Raiders do. It's what I, I am convinced that the, the story of 2024 is going to be not pretty, but effective. And today you saw a team that refused to lose. Now, I absolutely have to talk about something that blew my mind. There was a ton of Browns fans here today. And the Raiders were louder. Raider Nation, that second half was amazing. There was one brief moment where the Browns crowd really tried to get momentum and the Raider Nation just boomed. And uh, in the locker room, I mean, guys were talking about it. They were talking about it. And AP talked about it. You want to know what a complete recap of this game was? Is your Raider team begin to look in the mirror? There's the movie, The Lion King. I love that movie. And where this little cub Simba is scared. His dad's been killed, murdered. And he looks in the mirror and he's wondering what to do because he's facing adversity. And 
he looks into the water and he sees the reflection of his dad telling him, remember who you are. I'm going to tell you what happened today. The Raiders found a box with a bunch of mothballs in it. And they found some old school helmets and some old school jerseys and some old school grit and gumption. They found some fight. You could sense the spirit of Jim Otto, Todd Christensen, you know, the Raider greats of old. You could just sense them hovering over this building, telling this group of young Raiders, this isn't who we are. We don't lay down for anybody. We don't win them all. But last week was unacceptable. And they dug deep and they they, they begin to find their identity. They're going to lose games this year. They're, they're not an elite team. They're going to lose games this year. But I'm telling you, I, I, I don't see another game where they lay down like against Carolina. They found themselves. And we're going to look back as AP continues to build a winning culture here. We're going to continue to look back and see what happened tonight as a fork in the road. The Raiders could have easily quit tonight. Down seven starters, six that you knew about, and then Jack Jones had to sit out a quarter because of a coach's decision. They could have quit. Everyone would have said, well, yeah, they were down seven starters. But being able to quit and choosing to quit are two different things. Two different things. And I've heard this many times. It's not a Hondo original, but my dad used to tell it to his kids all the time. Your failure won't define you unless you quit. Then it will define you. Never quit. If you're a Raider tonight, grab yourself an A&W, a root beer, or whatever your drink of choice is, and you toast this team. You toast them. There's a lot of reasons why they could have quit, but they're not quitters. Tonight, this young team, with a lot of learning ahead of it, got refined. It did not get defined. This was a big win. I, You can make arguments that wins that got them into the playoffs were bigger, and I certainly would agree those are monster wins. Monster wins. I'm referring to the Charger game where they won on the last game of the season and went to the playoffs under Rich Passaccia. You can look back at the Kansas City Chief game but if they crap the bed this year, win four games or whatever, nobody remembers they beat the Chiefs. In my opinion, this was the biggest win in the five years I've been here. Because everybody expected, not everybody, the vast majority thought this team would quit. But that's not how AP coaches. That's why I love being able to take you in the building every day and let you know what we're seeing, what we're feeling, what's going on, what it's being experienced. They go now to Denver where I think they're going to win next week. I do. Um, I do think Devontae will be back next week. I'm unsure about Max. I sure know he wants to be. But that's neither here nor there. The principle of the point is this. This was a, a refining moment. Your Raiders took a step towards becoming a healthy franchise. Your Raiders took a step on not just occasionally, you know, the Raiders are a roller coaster. One year they hit the playoffs and they're out for five and then up for one, down for five. AP's building to get them on a plane where it's every year playoffs are the minimum. To build that culture is very difficult in the National Football League where there's a lot of turnover and a salary cap. It isn't like it used to be. But to build that culture, you need wins like this. How many times have I told you good teams find a way to win when they're not playing good? 
you saw what Luke gets. He's been wanting to do. You saw. Now, I'm going to make it really clear. I don't believe there's anybody on this team outside of Max Crosby whose job is secure if they don't play well. All right, Christian Wilkins. That's it. Everybody else is subject to change. They have to play well. And they have to play at a high level. That's the expectation your head coach set last week when he walked into that press conference and said, some people made business decisions and we're going to have to make some too. It was one of the best things he's ever done. Ever. And I'm proud of him. I'm proud of him. And I have no idea what happened. But I'm going to tell you, they found a way. They found a way. Your coach made a definitive statement. He's one of you. That's a really, really big deal. The complete recap tonight is the Raiders just took a decent team, a great defense, to the woodshed. They out physical them. They out-toughed them. And they out and they just out mentally took them down. I want to read you one thing. Penalties. Cleveland had five for 38 yards. Raiders had six for 49. Unacceptable. A couple of those were young guys learning. So you can live with that. Can live with it. It's part of a learning curve. You play young players, young players are gonna make young player mistakes. But this was a character win. Now they go on to Denver and get the win up there. The Raiders are not back to the glory days. But they now understand who they're expected to be. They get it now. In this moment, when AP, one week ago today, put that stake in the ground, today's win. He deserved a game ball. Today would not happen had he not responded the way he did last week. A phenomenal response. A true sign of leadership. Pick the Raiders up. Just like another linebacker coach who became a head coach who had played the game. John Madden put this team on his shoulder before. AP did it last week. And they got the win today. See you tomorrow, everybody.